Uh, this is Dr. Jerry Hash. I'm a physical therapist and an orthopedic manual physical therapist, which means I treat joints. I work at Hash Institute in Aurora, Colorado, and uh, we do educational seminars for physical therapists, and uh, we also treat uh, chronic pain clients. And our website is www.hes, like Sam, chinstitute.com. And this presentation is very interesting because Brian is a physician who is 58 years old and was diagnosed with Schuerman's kyphosis at age 15. And then you had x-rays later on that confirmed the wedge deformities and such. Correct. What age was that? Um, 20 or so. And then I just had it repeated for the first time since then several months ago. Aha, uh -huh. very good, very good. So we know you have ankylosing spondylitis. Not necessarily. Or we know we have Schuerman's kyphosis. kyphosis. With the wedging of the vertebrae. Correct. Yeah. Um, now usually with ankylosing spondylitis, usually the inflammation begins in the sacroiliac joint. And you'll note fusion in the, S, in the SI joint. But I want to demonstrate um, the use of joint stress tests. And when we do joint stress tests through the pelvis, what we find is that I can take up the slack through the pelvis and I can impart a forward spring and there is a recoil and that's true on both sides. And if you were to watch him walk, you would see that he walks quite freely there's no rigidity in the pelvis. And of course, he can also glide the pelvis to either side. And let's have you lie on your stomach, please. Sorry. No, it's okay. And with him prone, I can induce inferior glide. I see his heels bob up and down. So the force does translate through the SI joint. The SI joints are not fused. They allow mov movement to translate through them. It's only a small movement, we know that, uh, we, know, we know the research, um, but nonetheless it is a physiological movement and I'm able to spring on his sacrum and create movement as well. So my conclusion is that his SI joints are not fused and maybe that does make a case against AS, ankylosing spondylitis. Um, you can see the obvious uh, kyph kyphosis in his thoracic spine and when I do these joint stress tests I'll start at the L5 segment and I can take up slack and spring it and get recoil and doing that for several lumbar segments I start to feel a little stiff here and then right here which is probably T12 I can't get any movement and I'm putting a reasonable amount of force and I'm even doubling the normative force that I would do these spring tests with and there's no give no give at all none at all throughout his thoracic spine. His cervical spine is quite free. His rib cage is very free anteriorly and I can also spring his ribs and his ribs are free as well. And so I just thought it was an interesting demonstration um, where the thoracic spine has lost its, its mobility per our limited ability to test it passively, but there is retained mobility through the sacroiliac joints.